Hello and welcome to another episode of Katie the Science Lady. I'm Mrs. Jacobson and today's topic is M phase of the cell cycle. So let's learn together. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about M phase, which can be broken down into mitosis and cytokinesis. So these are the final parts of the cell cycle. We started with the interphase, which consisted of G1, S, and G2 phases. And then we did the actual dividing part, and that's what we're getting to today, which is M phase. So in order to start this process, we have to think about how DNA is stored. Now, we know it's in the nucleus. We've learned that before. And we've talked a little bit about chromosomes. Um, you've heard me talk about them before in other videos, but we really haven't talked about how they become chromosomes because DNA right now, as we know it, is kind of just a mess inside the nucleus. So today we're only talking about eukaryotic DNA. And eukaryotic DNA is tricky to store inside a cell because you have around six feet of it in each cell. Now, that doesn't seem like quite that much to us. Some of you are six feet tall. But when you think about how your cells are microscopic and they contain six feet of something, that alone is a little bit crazy. So what it has to do is it has to supercoil itself. And chromatin is formed when DNA gets wrapped around protein spools. So it'd be kind of like, think of a slinky. That's kind of how I think of it. So if the inside of the slinky, you know, those things that go boing, boing like that, the inside of the slinky, that air space, is kind of like the protein spool. And the chromatin is that slinky that gets coiled around it like this. If you stretch out a slinky, you can stretch it out really far, but then it snaps back to something much smaller because it's tightly coiled. And then chromosomes form when that chromatin that's already coiled, it'd be like taking a slinky and coiling it up further. So almost like when you condense it and it becomes about this tall, something that could be 20 feet long becomes much, much smaller when you super coil it. And here's what we're talking about. We start with DNA on this side over here. It's already slightly coiled. It's in a double helix formation, which means that it's wrapped around itself. But then it's going to get coiled around things called histones, and those are kind of like your protein spools, and that double coils it again, and it keeps coiling until it forms a supercoil. And now those supercoils to me look like um, the telephones that we used to have back in the, um, the 80s or the early 90s when I was born. So we've got those. So our chromosomes are going to end up looking kind of like that X shape. And then our chromatin was the slightly coiled DNA. A lot of people call it uncoiled, but that's not technically true. Chromatin is still coiled, just not as much as a super coiled chromosome. And then if we take a look at an actual picture um, under a microscope, we can see our chromatin just looks kind of like a mess. Um, it's hard to tell where something starts and ends. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. But if you look at your chromosomes, they look more like worms. Um, they're coiled up more tightly. You can see the distinct shape of them. Now, how is DNA stored? Our number of chromosomes doesn't change. They're just twice the size. So um, before S phase, each chromosome is made of one DNA molecule. Remember, S phase is when we synthesize an extra copy of DNA. So we make a copy in S phase. And before that, we have one DNA molecule, like this. So we have one single chromosome before mitosis. It's got a centromere. It's just one piece of the puzzle. Now, after S phase, after we copy it, we have two identical DNA molecules. We're just going to take this and make a clone of it. And they still attach at that centromere. That's that center point that's going to hold on to each copy so they don't float away or get lost. The four phases of mitosis are represented up here in this mnemonic device. It doesn't spell out words, but it's P-M-A-T or P-M-A-T. Um, that's a pretty easy one to remember. It's really short. Um, you say P-M-A-T and pretty much everybody knows what you mean in biology. So before we get there, we have to go through interphase. And we'll see here that we've got our coiled mass of DNA in the middle of the nucleus. It is not coiled into chromosomes yet. So that's the one of the big differences between the start of mitosis and interphase that our DNA is not coiled. So in prophase, the first thing that happens is that chromosome, um, the chromatin condenses into chromosomes. So we take that slightly coiled chromatin and we supercoil it into chromosomes. The nucleolus and the nuclear membrane, that kind of orangish shape you see around the nucleus here, they also disappear. So in order to get our DNA to move and be copied into another cell, we have to get rid of that barrier. Because right now it's protecting the DNA from moving at all. 
So it has to be gone in order for that DNA to split and separate during mitosis. The last thing that happens during prophase is that the centrioles are moving. We'll talk about centrioles more in a minute. And what they do is they start to form spindle fibers, which are going to kind of make the framework for mitosis. So the centrioles are going to move to opposite parts of the cell, so they're going to be at different ends here and here. Um, it doesn't matter which pole they are, but they're going to be opposite each other. And then when we have prophase, we see that they're condensed into chromosomes. We see that we've got a centriole here. I know you can't see them in the picture, and a centriole here. And the key word for prophase is prepare. Moving on, so those centrioles that we talked about, their job is to create spindle fibers. Spindle fibers are what are going to pull your different chromosomes or chromatids to opposite parts of the cell. So we know we have a copy of our DNA in interphase. In S phase, we make a second copy. So we've got that nice X. We have to separate those in mitosis. So they're gonna get pulled apart by spindle fibers that are made by centrioles in order to give us our two separate copies of DNA. Our second phase is called metaphase. This one I think is probably the easiest phase to take a look at and remember. The chromosomes here are aligning at the equator of the cell. Now, if you think about where the equator is on the earth, it's in the middle. So that's my favorite way to remember this. Metaphase is the middle where they line up. At that point, spindle fibers attach to the centromere of each chromosome. Remember, centromere, it sounds like center, and that's basically what it is. It's that center point of the chromosome that those spindle fibers are attaching to. And we see that here. We've got all our chromosomes lined up in the middle or at the equator. They all have those spindle fibers attached to them. So those spindle fibers are the blue little lines that are attaching to our purple chromosomes here. You can also see that in our actual picture. We've got them all lined up here in the middle. And that is how I remember it. If I'm ever looking at a lot of pictures and I'm trying to figure out where they are in the cell cycle or I'm trying to identify them, I find metaphase first. That always helps me because they're easy. They're lined up in the middle. They're, it's a very clear cut picture. So that's what I look at first. And then I can kind of adjust everything around that to figure out where all the other cells fall in the process. All right, our third phase is called anaphase. And that's when the spindle fibers pull our centromeres apart. So that's kind of your key there. In anaphase, they're moving apart. A for apart, A for anaphase. So the more kind of ways that you put this together in your brain, either with mnemonic devices like PMAT or things that rhyme or things that start with the same letter, that's easier because it just makes it easier to memorize and to think through. Our sister chromatids, so those paired chromatids like this, they're pulled to opposite poles of the cell along those spindle fibers. Remember, they're going towards the centromeres, which are the spindle fiber factories, essentially. We see that here. They were in the middle aligned in metaphase, and now they're getting pulled towards those poles. And you see that here as well in our microscopic picture. So this is an actual photo of a cell undergoing mitosis. Um, you can see by the kind of rigid shape around the outside, that geometric shape, that it's most likely a plant cell. And again, our key here is apart or away. Um, I like to think anaphase apart. It just helps me because they're literally getting pulled apart from each other. Um, away also works exactly the same. All right, our last phase of mitosis is telophase. We've gone through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and now we're ending with telophase. Don't forget, we also have cytokinesis after this. In telophase, our chromatids reach the poles of the cell. So they've gone all the way to the opposite ends of the cell. And then our nuclear membranes start to reform. Remember, we can't have a nucleus if we don't have a membrane around it to protect that DNA. And now that we've separated our genetic information, now we can keep it safe again. We can coil it all up. We can make sure that we've got nuclear membranes around it so that when we form those two separate cells, it's protected again. And we see that here. So we see those spindle fibers, those are starting to reform a nuclear membrane. Um, and this is when you start to see that cell pull apart. It's starting to look more like two cells instead of either just one cell or one really elongated cell. So we are getting kind of what this dip is called here. It's called the cleavage furrow and to cleave means to cut something in two. So that's what it means. The way I remember telophase is two. You're making two nuclear membranes. You are starting to make two cells but I think the best way is to think two nuclei because in metaphase, we lined up in the middle. In anaphase, we pulled apart. 
and telophase were making two separate nuclei. That's the key for M phase. In mitosis, you're making two separate nucleuses. But in cytokinesis, you're making two separate cells. That's the key difference between the two. M phase, two nuclei, and then two cells. So cytokinesis. Our cells are going to pinch in two at that cleavage furrow, that part where they're starting to come together. And that's going to separate the membrane, the cytoplasm, and our formed nuclei. So at this point, our nuclei should be reformed. Um, if you're doing that much cellular moving, you want those nuclei to be intact to protect your brand new DNA. And we see that here. We've got this reforming here. So we've got two cells. You can see that those chromosomes are kind of, they're still slightly condensed, but they may be unwinding back to chromatin. And then this is always a good gift to look at. I use this a lot in class. Um, I usually leave this up for my students for a while because I want them to be able to start seeing when it goes through the phases. We have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So you can see in the middle, that's the easiest part to recognize. You can always tell when it's at metaphase. And before that, you know prophase is when it's trying to condense. You know that anaphase it's pulling apart and telophase that it's going to go ahead and make those two cells. Cytokinesis, you'll start to see they've got a little bit of that formation in between. So this cell doesn't quite get all the way through cytokinesis. Um, it still has a little bit of membrane um, together connecting the two cells, but in time it will separate and form two fully succinct daughter cells. Okay, so M phase of the cell cycle can be broken down into two main sections, mitosis, which is the splitting apart of nuclei, and cytokinesis, which is the splitting apart of the cytoplasm, cell membrane, and other cell components. So let's walk through mitosis quickly. The four stages of mitosis are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And we kind of represent that with the, the mnemonic device PMAP. In prophase, the cell prepares for division, the nuclear membrane disappears, and the centrioles move to the opposite parts of the cell. In metaphase, chromosomes line up at the metaphase plate, or the middle of the cell, ready for dividing. In anaphase, the chromosomes move apart from each other towards the centrioles, and they're pulled by spindle fibers. In telophase, our two nuclei start to reform, and the spindle fibers start to contract. The last part of the cell cycle is cytokinesis, and that's also the second part of M phase. In cytokinesis, those nuclear membranes are completely reformed, and the cytoplasm and cell membrane split to form two separate cells called daughter cells. In mitosis, these two cells are identical. They are exact copies or clones of each other. And that's because in S phase of the cell cycle, the DNA of the cell was copied or a second copy was synthesized or made. Well, that's it for today. Um, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more biology videos. And I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something and I'll see you later.